Hey music makers, welcome back to the studio, it's Dean, and today we're looking at how to sample insane sounding drums using the sounds given to you in GarageBand. And I'm gonna show you four steps or four stages for creating incredible sounding drum productions for your songs, and these are gonna go in order from most beginner to most advanced. So if you're new to producing drums, then there's something for you. And if you're feeling courageous, then be sure to stick around to the end of this video. Let's dive in. So before we get started on our four steps producing or sampling drums, you need to know something, and that is that GarageBand offers you tons of amazing sounding drum kits and drum sounds and samples for you to use in your song. And to start, I'll show you by going up to the library. I have my drum kit selected, and you can see within this electronic drum kit menu, I have 20 drum kits to choose from. If I click on the drum kit menu, I have another 20 drum kits to choose from. So that is 40 kicks. 40 snare sounds, 40 hi-hat sounds, 40 clap sounds. And if that wasn't enough, then you have even more drum sounds here in the loops library. You can search by kit or by beat. You can type in things like kick, snare, etc., and you can find tons of loops or samples that you can drag into your project and use to sample drums. And I say all this because I want you to know that you don't have to reach outside of GarageBand to find tons of amazing drum sounds and samples. So now let's dive into step one of creating drum performances in GarageBand, and this is the easiest step. It's for those of you who are beginners, you've never done this before, I would recommend adding a new track and simply choosing the automatic drummer. In one click, it gives you a great beat to go along with your song, and then you can come down here to beat presets and actually change the beat and see which one that you like best with your song. You can also adjust things like how loud or how soft you want the performance, how simple or how complex you want the performance, and you can get a whole lot more specific with all the parameters on this side of the automatic drummer window. Not to mention that you can come over here to the library and actually choose from a library of different drummers all with their own sound and their own flavor. So let's say this was a more hip hop style song, then of course I would click here and choose one of the hip hop style drummers. So I want to conclude step one by simply saying this is so easy and there there is no shame in using the automatic drummer. This is where I started and I still use this in some of my professionally produced projects today. And here's one last tip for how you can build on what the automatic drummer gives you and start to dabble in producing your own drums. You can actually create a new track, choose software instrument, then choose whatever drum kit your drummer is playing. In this case, he's using the SoCal kit, so I'm gonna choose the SoCal kit here in the library. Then I go over to his drum performance, I hit Command C to copy, I put it down in this track, hit Command V to paste, and now it gives me the MIDI data from his entire performance. So I can mute out his performance and I can begin to move this around and I can customize this entire performance piece by piece if I want to. Step two would be writing your own drum parts by using the software instruments offered to you in GarageBand. You simply choose a sound from the drum kit menu, which are real sounding drums, or from the electronic drum kit menu, which have a more electronic processed sound. And to play and record any of these software drum kits, you can actually hit Command K on your typing keyboard and you can use your typing keyboard to play a beat. So I started with the Epic Electro Kit. It's here under the electronic drum kit menu and it has a nice warm round kick sound and then it's clap sound is really interesting. It almost sounds like a camera shutter. Check this out. Then an advanced tip for here in stage two is to actually layer your software drum sounds. For my second layer, I used the Create Digger Kit under the electronic drum kit menu, and I played the same kick and snare pattern, and it sounds like this. So when I layer both of these drum kits together, it just gives a fuller sound and it helps it translate better to all speaker systems. So if someone's listening on their phone, they're gonna hear the kick and the snare punch through the mix a lot better. Yeah. 
Stage three would be using loops to layer into that drum performance or even write a drum performance with loops by themselves. In this case, I layered in a snare sound, a kick sound, and a hi-hat sound on top of my existing software instrument drums. And I did that by going to the loops library and doing something really, really simple. I started by typing in kick. And here you can see different kick sounds that GarageBand offers. Once I found one that I liked, I simply dragged it into my project. Then I shaved off the extra layers I didn't need. Then I simply copied and pasted the drum performance wherever I needed it in the song. And now you can hear how the kick drum really punches through the mix a lot stronger. Here's one tip for layering in more drum sounds on top of an existing drum performance. If you've already got two kicks or say two snares and you're bringing in another one, you're going to really need to bring their volume way down. Because we're not really looking for an addition in volume, we're looking for an addition in warmth and roundness and punch. Next let's move on to the snare, where I layered in a snare drum and used the exact same technique as the kick. I went over to my loops menu. I simply typed in snare, it's genius isn't it? After doing some searching, I found the cracking snare topper. And you can hear that snare sound in there. I wanted that for my song, so all I did was I drug it into my project and then I shaved it down until I only had that snare sound. By itself, the snare sample is a little choppy and could use some reverb and delay. So what I did was I actually used a guitar patch under the Clean Electric Echo Studio and it gave me this kind of long reverb and this long delay that worked really nicely with the context of my song. It's so good. Then lastly, I layered in a hi-hat sound by using the same technique. I came over here, I typed in hi-hat, of course. After doing some searching around, I found the hat swishing topper. So obviously I dragged it in and looped it out. And I added it to this section of the song, which is the climax, to help raise the energy on this final part of the song. Next is stage four, and this is the crazy layer. So this is not for the faint of heart. I'm gonna start by showing you how I layered in these boom sounds to create a snare tell. So it sounds like my snares are really long and huge. What I did was went to my loops library, I hit boom. And as you can see, GarageBand offers you a lot of these boomer effects sounds. And they're just these really cool, big, boomy booms. So one quick note to make here, I might have more boomer effects than you do. That's because I have a program called MainStage, which gives me all of Logic's instruments and sounds inside of GarageBand. I'll put a link in the description where I do a video on this very thing. So what I did is I found multiple sounds that I liked. I dragged them onto this track, but they were a bit too boomy. And so this is where we get into sound design. If you hit B on your typing keyboard, it brings up your mix window and you're probably looking at controls. So I flip over to EQ. And what I did was create what's called a high pass filter because it lets the high frequencies go through and it captures the low frequencies and eliminates them. So I turned this on, I brought it up just above 200 Hertz. And so it takes out some of that boominess from the low end. If I turn this off, you can hear how hard and intense the booms are. But if I turn this on, it takes out the bass from the boom so it can be this softer snare tail that doesn't have this almost kick-like boom to it. Then on the other end, I turned on what's called the low pass filter because it cuts out the highs and lets the lows through. And this just softens things a bit. It doesn't make it as in your face. And this is really important since I already have three other snare sounds within the song. Then of course, when you add it in with the rest of the sounds that we already have, it creates this really, really nice luscious reverb tail for our snare. Then 
And lastly, I added in some tom fills to this final chorus. And guess where I found them? Up here in the loops library, I typed in toms. And after some searching, I found this beat. So I only wanted the middle part of that tom fill, so of course I shaved down what I didn't want and left only what I wanted. And I didn't do any specific shaping to this tom fill, but I did do one move to make it unique as it goes along. If I double click on the region, it brings up the edit window. I can also hit the scissor tool. And you can see that I actually transposed this first one five semitones down, then if you click on the second one, I transpose it 12 semitones down. The third one goes back to five, the last one goes back to 12, and so it gives me this alternating unique sound. So when you add everything in together, you bring the vocals back in, this is what it sounds like as a finished product. So that is how I produce and sample drums here in GarageBand, and I hope this opens up a whole new world of exciting possibilities for you. Also, here at the end of this video, I want to say that if you're new to GarageBand and you're hungry to grow and use GarageBand to make incredible music, then be sure to check out my GarageBand Foundations classes. I have a course for the Mac version of GarageBand as well as the iPad, iPhone version of GarageBand. So if you're interested in going deeper, then check out the links in the description. And lastly, if you want to hear the fully complete finished version of this song then go check out my other youtube channel where i release my original music that's commonly made in GarageBand. this has been dean thanks for joining me in the studio today and i'll catch you in another video really soon Sorry.